Hello, I'm Soycat, and welcome back to another second channel video. So I am from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I actually decided I'd wear the flag just in case people didn't believe me. This is my proof. I am in fact British. And I wanted to talk about the United States of America because I recently went over each of the 50 states and explained what I know about them as a British person, both from the media, but also from my various visits to the states and the people that I've met from those different places. And I figured I would do the exact same thing that I did in that video today. But rather than talking about the states, because there are 50 states, and technically speaking, they're equal in terms of uh, political power, but in terms of where the people live, it's not really evenly distributed. In fact, if you look at the list of the largest cities in the United States by population, a thing which does exist, you'll see how there's 314 uh, cities which have over 100,000 people in them. Yep, that's real nice. Uh, by the way, as you get down to the bottom of this list, I've heard of very few of these cities. I've heard of South Bend, and I've heard of Burbank, and I've heard of... Green Bay because of the Packers and San Mateo. But for the most part, when you get down on this list, you've heard of very few of the cities. But I figured what might be fun is to go through the 50 biggest cities in the United States of America and talk about what's famous about those instead. Because here's the deal, right? Cities are where people live. You live in a state, sure. But under that, you live in a city or at least a agglomeration, whether it be a town or whatever else. And I want to talk about those major metropolitan areas because I've heard so much more about, say, LA than California. I've heard so much more about, say, Chicago than Illinois, etc., etc. And I I figured let's talk about those things in this video. So let's dive into it. Also using city propers as our, uh, uh, I guess our like definition for this one. Even though I think that uh, urban agglomeration is a much bigger, uh, you know, more important example, just because the combined metropolitan statistical area of say uh, Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario, is just far less known than, you know, one of its individual cities of LA or Long Beach or San Jose or San Francisco or Oakland. These are all well, more well known than the combined agglomerations. So we just won't be dealing with that. Instead, let's go through the 50 biggest cities and we'll be showing them on the map as well, just in case you don't know them, because New Orleans is apparently the 50th biggest state in the United States of America. That was actually a shock to me that like, it's all the way at 50th because it feels so much bigger. It's a very big, um, you know, like tourist destination, I do understand, not just internationally, but also within the country. And uh, yeah, my first thought always when I look at New Orleans on a map is like, oh yeah, New Orleans is like this, it's got this huge bridge because there were some suburbs out here and they wanted to link them to be faster. So they built one of the biggest bridges at the time. It's so ridiculous to look at this bridge and I want to talk about it. But I won't. Instead, I'll mention that New Orleans is a really interesting city because it obviously is, uh, it's got French origin. I mean, it's in Louisiana. It's named after King Louis, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, New Orleans is a very French style city with a lot of French style culture attached to it. Um, there's those bignets, I want to say. <laughs> I'm saying that horrifically wrong. Um, there's a lot of things that are French-ish in origin that have kind of been Americanized um, that come from New Orleans, uh, including like Cajun, which isn't actually French. It's like a native. There's a, there's a lot of different interesting, uh, you know, crossovers between like the native people between the French and between the Americans and uh, that is something you get across all of Louisiana and which is kind of like New Orleans is the big hub of Louisiana in terms of visiting it again very uh, weird for a uh, state in the south to have a big city on this top 50 list at least excluding Texas of course but that's a whole different thing we'll get into as we talk about the 49th biggest city what's it gonna be you saw the list earlier it's Tampa Florida so what do I know about Tampa Florida I mean, uh, besides the fact that uh, I <laughs> played Tony Hawk as a, a underground as a kid, and I want to say in that game there's like a Tampa amateur contest, and it's like one of the early uh, levels that I got stuck on. So like, it's grilled in my head as like, oh, I hate Tampa. They've got that awful skateboarding convention, which probably isn't real. Um, other than that, I just know Tampa as being a fairly large city in uh, Florida. There's like three cities in the south of Florida that like are generally visited. There's Tampa, Orlando, and Miami. And Tampa's just like, oh yeah, it's there. It's in interesting. I'm learning just now it has a place called St. Petersburg and uh, otherwise I know it has a major airport and other than that, that is what I know about uh, Tampa. Again, quite interesting given that it's the 49th biggest city. The 48th biggest city, um, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area, is Arlington. I like Arlington because it's like right here in the middle of the two. Like it feels like, they, if you look at the networks between uh, Fort Worth and Dallas, you can see they're like literally like fighting and almost pulling apart and Arlington's like the kid that they're like, hey, I don't, don't know which side to go with. But yeah, this is generally considered one giant metropolitan area and I think considering Dallas Fort Worth not to be twin cities is kind of dumb but the list hasn't done precisely that which is why Arlington is the 48th biggest city but really it's a part of a much bigger city arguably one of the very biggest in the countries in the country if you combine them together so we'll just kind of skip it and go on to 47 which is going to be uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We should stop announcing them. Maybe we won't, you know? This is this is how I measure your cities. It's interesting, actually, that even, like, 
The 47th biggest city in the United States is one I know about. There aren't many countries that have like their 47th biggest city be one that's well known about. But here you go. I know about America, apparently, because Tulsa is a city which is, um, you know, Oklahoma is a pretty uh, lowly populated state. It was the last of like the major, uh, like it was like state 46 or 47, I want to say. And uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma is a city which is mostly there for oil reasons, although there was a big um, explosion in a government building there. If I'm, oh no, that was Oklahoma City. So I guess um, Tulsa is for oil and that one joke in France. There you go. There's what I know about your city, Tulsa. But the fact that I do know Tulsa, the fact that they do make that joke, and that it's stuck in my head all these years later, means I know about the 47th biggest city in the United States of America. I also know about the 46th. In fact, actually, I've heard of all of these cities in passing, besides two of them, but we'll get to those later, because 46 is a city I've been to. The first on the list, in fact, very excited about this, it's Minneapolis. So Minneapolis, which again is twin cities with St. Paul, but like, you know, there's a, there's a gap between them. Realistically, they're just like, they share an airport and there's like a kind of agglomeration between them. But Minneapolis is a very big city. I love it for a few reasons. One, they've, uh, you know, because it's very cold. I mean, very far north. Uh, almost, it's basically Canada, right? But um, Minneapolis is very, very far north, so it gets very cold. So between the um, the buildings, there is actually this like sky walkway. So above the streets, let's pray we find one that actually has them. Above the streets, you find these big hallways, and these big hallways, like you can walk between the buildings without getting cold, because if it's minus 20 outside, but it's just stay inside. So all the financial district buildings are linked together that way. And if people want to go from building to building, they walk in the cozy, um, not air conditioned, <laughs> the cozy uh, heated inside hallways. And I really like that personally. So that is uh, Minneapolis. I also, um, when I went to Minneapolis, I enjoyed like, they've got, there's a lot of pretty things going around there. And also the fact that it's like so close to like a kind of small city, it was great. Also, uh, they have a major street, uh, like, it's called a streetcar in America, but they have a major tram system is what the world calls it. And that is pretty rare for North American cities to have post General Motors streetcar conspiracy of the early 20th century. So yeah, that's kind of nice, right? That's kind of cool. They got a streetcar system and people actually use it, which is interesting. Also, I think they might actually call it a tram, which is, they've got a fun, well, they, they call it the right light rail, which is actually the term, if I'm not mistaken, but it's rare for a city to actually call something by its actual word. And that's kind of nice in my opinion. Yeah, this is a light rail station. See, it's cool. I like that. Government Plaza, in fact because they have government over here. Also, the other interesting fact about Minneapolis is they, I mean, there's a billion, of course, I can't mention all the interesting facts about videos. I'm just talking about British facts. One of the things I know as a British person, I should say, you gotta clarify that, because there's gonna be that one guy like, oh, this is misinformation. Arlington's the best city and you don't know it. I, I don't know it, I don't live there. So the other thing I know about Minneapolis is they have a huge, uh, like the largest minority is Somalians, uh, because it's a very white city, at least when I went, but there's like a giant subsection of Somalians, which is weird because across America, it's like, you know, like whites and then Latinos and then like blacks. But in Minneapolis, it's like whites and then it's like Somalians. And it's a very interesting, uh, diver it's a very different diversity to the rest of the country. Speaking of different diversity to the rest of the country, we're going to California because California has the nation's 45th biggest city. So Oakland, in California, fun fact, um, is a city which is mostly known for its airport, I imagine, like outside of the US. Uh, that's how I heard about it for the longest time. Like, oh yeah, this is Oakland. This is Oakland International Airport. It's a cheaper airport than uh, San Francisco International, which is just across the bay over here, as you can see. Um, and given that it connects to the same BART system, why not just use it instead, is the logic many tra travelers use. Uh, Norwegian used to fly there, so at one point I was gonna fly into Oakland. It never came to be, though. Um, I do know Oakland, however, because I've been to San Francisco a few times. It's known as, like, the the cheaper out there kind of system. And also I know the Oakland, the Oakland Bridge, or the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, as it's apparently officially known. But the Oakland Bridge, is often like people take pictures of it and don't, they don't realize they're taking pictures of the wrong bridge because they think they're getting the uh the set the, the golden gate bridge and that's kind of funny if you ask me is that the oakland bridge it's not very impressive is it anyway with that said sorry for insulting you oakland it's just the sad truth uh next up we've got virginia beach in virginia so virginia is a really interesting state because there's like the north part of it's obviously so integrated with Washington DC and the south part of it is kind of like the, the north the south. So Virginia Beach is in the south part of the north. Um, as you can see, it is apparently Virginia and it's on the beach. You cannot argue with their, uh, <laughs> their naming scheme. I would argue though, like, is this really that big? Like somehow I'm going to check the population. There's 450,000 people living in Virginia Beach, which is 
more than I would expect, given the state. Like, look at the the size of this place, and then the number of people living there. It doesn't add up to me. Also, they live they live near Mount Trashmore, which sounds like a joke version of Mount Rushmore, but apparently they have it. Um, I know nothing about it. I have heard nothing about Virginia Beach. Even right now, Norfolk, Virginia, like. I've heard something about it. I've heard about Chesapeake. It's like a salad dressing I got when I was in Delaware, I want to say maybe. But Virginia Beach, it's the beach it's in Virginia. That's the, Those are the two facts I can tell you as a British person. Speaking of things I can tell you as a British person, I can tell you about the 43rd biggest city in America, Long Beach, which is actually in, in the LA area, I want to say. It's down here, as you can see. So to me, I always like include this as like greater LA in my mind, but it is technically its own little city. We'll show you the borders right now. It looks like this. That's a, that's a, <laughs> there's like an enclave inside of it. I guess US city borders are always weird, but like there's a city inside of the city called Signal Hill. But Long Beach, um, I have heard of because um, it's kind of like a more expensive, like uh, kind of like retreat away from LA, although it's near the airport apparently. And also there is a street circuit, uh, or it's, I think it might be a street circuit, but it's a, it's, it's a Formula One circuit. Or maybe if it's not Formula One, it's just for racing. But so many racing games have taken me to Long Beach. I could find the track if I wanted to, I bet. Somewhere around here? No, not somewhere around here. But yeah, it's in that very South California vibe. And also, uh, oh, the guy who my, the guy who used to know at my network used to live in Long Beach. I know that one. So I was like, oh, wow. He, like, I think he was bragging to it, about me about it. And I was like, is that nice? Are you trying? Do you want me to say that's good? Or am I meant to be hor horrified that you have a apartment or a condo or as they call it uh in america over there and it's like oh actually you know condo apartment can someone explain in the comments down below to this day i'm still like is a condo just a apartment but like a pyramid scheme or what's the deal with that can you explain anyway moving on to the 42nd because i don't know everything about america that's the point of these videos but i do know about the 42nd biggest city in america it's omaha nebraska so it's nebraska's only uh, city that makes the list sadly and it is a pretty big city. Um, it's not the capital Sadly, uh, but what it is is it has this very interesting uh, Kind of uh, honor of being the city where uh, Warren Buffett lives if I'm not mistaken Hope I didn't get that wrong because if so the one thing I know about it's wrong Although their airport's called Epley Airfield. That's nice. That's a cool name for an airport Also the council bluffs is across the river that's kind of fun. But yeah, Omaha, Nebraska is really interesting to me because it's right on the border with um, Iowa, which means some of the, some people who work in Omaha are going to be living in Council Bluffs <laughs> across the river. Um, and also Warren Buffett is meant to live there. So the, billi the, the one of the richest men in America chooses to live in this city. And the thing about this city is it's very close to the geographic midpoint of the US and also very close to the, uh, the population midpoint. So... I would imagine if you wanted, if you had unlimited money for unlimited flights, uh, you would actually maybe choose to live somewhere around here if you had to be in all the corners of the US, which I don't think Warren Buffett does have to be. I think it's just because he grew up there or has some connection, but I think that's interesting. Maybe you do too. Every American I've ever spoken to just says corn about Nebraska, so the corn state. Am I right about that one? Speaking of uh, corn states though, let's move on to the 41st city because Raleigh, North Carolina. I have heard about this one. I want to say it's like a major tech hub in the United States. I don't know why there's so many tech businesses there. Also, North Carolina State University. That's what I know about Raleigh. Don't know too much more. Also, it's the state capital. So how does that all happen? What did North Carolina do? I don't know, but I know a lot of a lot of people from like the New York area see North Carolina as like the southern retreat where property prices are cheap or like New Jersey or something like that. Um, that, that I've heard that about that story multiple times now. And I wonder what the link is between New Jersey and North Carolina besides like N maybe. Tell me tell me the secrets, internet, if, you, if you've heard this same thing too. If not, it might be a coincidence. Unlike the 40th biggest city, Miami. So Miami, um, famous for Hotline Miami, famous for GT Grand Theft Auto's um, like one of the, one of the major cities is Miami, uh, I want to say. Vice City. Yeah, Vice City is Miami. Uh, also CSI Miami in Miami as well. But besides that, and besides, uh, the fact that, like, I imagine it to be a very trendy Floridian city, uh, I just know that, like, oh yeah, lots of people go there for, like, beach-style holidays in the UK. Like, it's very, very popular. Because there's also, there's Miami Airport. And there's also, uh, just the north of it, in the kind of area. There's Fort Lauderdale and also a place called Hollywood, and they share an airport, which is very cheap to fly to, in comparison to Miami. So, what else do I know about Miami? 
Uh, yeah, beaches and Vice City. And I imagine those things go together. Like you go to Miami for a vacation on the beach and then you do some vices because who doesn't love vices? I mean, it's the only way to keep your, your wood in place while you're working it, right? Anyway, with that said, let's talk about the 39th uh, biggest state uh, city in the United States of America. It's Colorado Springs. Don't know anything about it besides it's not too far away from Denver. And I had a subscriber who worked at a Tesla dealership there and he's like, you should come over to my Tesla dealership. And I was like, I don't have the, that doesn't work, but thank you for the offer, friend. Uh, so yeah, Colorado Springs. It is a big city in Colorado and it's not too far away from Denver because most people in Denver live in like, you can even see with their roads, there's like a big junction where most of the people live in like a little corridor over there. So there you go. That's what I know about Colorado Springs. But I do know things about Kansas City because Kansas City, uh, I, I learned this fact from uh, one of my first Minecraft your friends. He's like, hey, did you know that Kansas City is not even in Kansas fully? And yeah, it's mostly in Missouri. Wow, that's wacky. Kansas City is shared between Missouri and Kansas. The Kansas City, which is in Kansas, is smaller than the Kansas City, which is in Missouri. Isn't that wacky? I bet you think that's wacky. If you don't know that that's wacky, let's talk about the 37th biggest city, which is odd because by the metropolitan area, this would be a way larger city, but Atlanta is the uh, 37th largest city. And Atlanta is a really interesting one because it's a super, super, super liberal place inside a very deep South conservative state. It's a very populated state. It's a very, uh, it's one of the blackest cities in America, if I'm not mistaken. Again, people like to imagine that America's like white and black, but it's really like white and then like Latino with black being like very localized in the South in like big concentrations. Atlanta might be the biggest, but don't quote me on that one. I know it's a huge concentration of it. In fact, it's like the percentage um, of like, uh, I, I hope this is the correct term. Black people to non-black people is like one of the highest in the country in Atlanta. Also, Atlanta is where um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of movies are filmed because uh, obviously Hollywood's the go-to answer. But Atlanta gives huge tax breaks both to, um, you know, like companies who want to make movies, but also they give some form of tax break to uh, like the the airlines who are willing to operate to their airport, which means that Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is the busiest airport in the world. If you count domestic flights, it's flights, which they are flights, but it's not the same as an international flight. You get what I'm saying? But it's the busiest it's the busiest airport into the world. It's also the busiest international airport in the world, but not by international passenger volume. Those are key separate things. Trust me when I say that. Um, but yeah, this is a huge airport, as I'm sure you can see. Just looking at like, look at this airport on a map. It is. They have a lot of runways going on there. And you can even see just how big it is by like, th these are each individual terminals, but they're like the size of a normal-ish airport, maybe a big one. And you can see how like, it's got like A, B, C, D, E, F, and then like an international one. There's so much going on at this airport is what I'm trying to say right here. And um, yeah, the other interesting thing about it is it's like Delta Airlines biggest hub. So there's so many jokes about if you want to fly anywhere within the South America, you've got to connect through uh, Atlanta first. I think even Family Guy makes a joke about that. So yeah, fun fact. Did you know Atlanta, big airport, big black population, big movie uh, plan or something like that. They want to make Atlanta the new Hollywood and will they succeed? I don't know, but what I do know is that Sacramento is the state capital of uh, California. I know that because uh, I I've always like wanted to go to Sacramento. I had a friend I met in Minneapolis, actually. Wow, this all ties together. Who was like, you need to visit Sacramento. And I was like, do I need to or do you want to? And I don't know I don't know why people don't like it when you take that tone of logic with them. But yeah, Sacramento is a city that sounds interesting because it's like a medium-sized American city. I mean, apparently not if it's the 36th biggest. But um, the the way it sounded and the way the numbers usually sound are like, oh yeah, it's a medium-ish size uh, you know, American city, but because it's not on the coast like the rest of California, it's not that like ultra California, like deep blue vibe, but instead it's meant to be like a more interesting mix. Cause I want to, I want to see what like, you know, the hotlands, I want to see the, the middle of California because uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole interesting thing. What do I know about Sacramento otherwise? It's the state capital and also people live there probably. A lot of them, the 36th highest in a single city, unlike the 35th highest, which is going to be Mesa, Arizona. So Mesa, Arizona is right next to Phoenix. So what I just assumed, because like I I hadn't fully heard of it, and I was like, wait, there's like Phoenix, Mesa, something or something. I hadn't fully heard of uh, Mesa, and I assume 
Because, okay, wait, here's, here's something I'll just say to it. Because I assume there's a rivalry between Mesa and Phoenix, maybe. Like, oh, yeah, I live in Mesa, not Phoenix. So what I'll just say, just to offend all the Mesa people, is like, ah, oh, yeah, Mesa's probably just a part of Phoenix, honestly. They're just the same, right? Perfectly the same. Nothing's different between them. That's Mesa and Phoenix, for sure. So next up, let's offend some people back over in California. Because Fresno, California, is a city I've heard of. But, you know, if you ask me to locate it on a map, apparently I couldn't. Um, I think I know Fresno because it's, like, on the high-speed rail link between uh, the south of California and the north. And I want to say, I mean, it's, I, feel, I feel like I've heard of something being from Fresno. And that's, uh, that's why I know about your city, Fresno. Do you like that, Fresnos? Uh, apparently not as much as Tucson, Arizona is going to like what I have to say about them next. So Tucson, Arizona, which is just north of Phoenix, if I'm not mistaken just south of Phoenix, I am mistaken. Uh, Tucson, Arizona is a city I have also heard nothing about. It is one of the three, apparently. Um, I, Tucson, I want to say it's near that one road that's in kilometers an hour instead of uh, miles per hour, because there's one road in America where they change the signs to get ready for the conversion, and they're still waiting, like, you know what? One day America will change over, and apparently Tucson, might be near there. I'm just, honestly, I'm guessing, which, you know, isn't good. Instead of guessing, let's talk about 32, because Albuquerque, New Mexico, I'll be honest with you here, I've heard about it from two things. There's a song called Albuquerque. It's by Weird Al. It's a really interesting song because it's like a story more than a song. And then Breaking Bad is set in Albuquerque, I think. I know that um, Better Call Saul is like between Santa Fe and Albuquerque. But anyway, um, Albuquerque is a city I've actually visited. So be, like usually I could just give those two observations. But because I've been there, I want to tell you about my time in Albuquerque. It's one of the weirdest cities I've been to. One, because their airport is officially called a Sunport. Why did they ch Why did they rename it that? I don't know. It's way smaller than it seems to like if you're... Oh, also, I have been to this Panda Express. Fun fact. Hours and services may differ due to COVID-19. So disappointed. But, um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I have been to Albuquerque, and my experience there was really, really weird, I'd say. Like, it's got this, uh, like, if we go to the old town, uh, you can see how it's, like, got this super kind of, like, Mexican vibe to it, right? Like, this is a gift shop. This is, this is definitely what traditional Mexico looks like. Uh, there's a lot of gift stop shops, because they... They have this whole thing of being like, yep, a lot of people come here, they stop in for an hour, then they come out, we'll just sell them some gifts. But it looks like kind of like, you know, again, it's like, it's, it's what I picture when I picture like, old style Mexico or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. But at the same time, if you uh, look at the actual city itself, it's just a modern metropolis that happens to be in a desert. In fact, actually, because I've walked down these very streets, I should be able to find, I just like stumbled around a bit. I found a park, I want to say, and then I was like, okay, I've gone too far. But um, yeah, when I was looking around on some random streets, I saw like, there's everything, it looks like a desert where they've planted some grass to make it not look like a desert. And I just felt very weird about the whole experience. There's also lots of like 2D cacti around the place. But the other reason, the, thing, the other story I want to tell you about Albuquerque is I took buses to get around the city, which is in America taking public transport. It's just, it's just a death sentence. It's like, oh, are you an idiot? You don't know how to drive? Are you poor or something? And it's like, no, I just think it's a more efficient, anyway. Whatever. So I took the bus in Albuquerque. It was one dollar, first of all, for a bus to the airport. One dollar. I gave them a. Do I gave the man a dollar. He gave me no change. That was our interaction. There was two people on the bus, which is crazy, given it was a bus to the or some port, I should say. Um, and three. Uh, admittedly, this was like a month ago, so like COVID had just started. Maybe that's the excuse. But three was the fact that I witnessed a car crash for the first time um, while I was there, and the bus driver was just like. What did you do? <laughs> and like, I, I like that he was like a fun guy. Like he, uh, also, I know that Gary Johnson is from Albuquerque, I want to say. So, and he is a funny New Mexican. To, I know two New Mexicans, apparently. A bus driver and a man who has failed to be president twice in a row. And that's, that's something, right? That's, that's something. I know your city more than I know the 31st city, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, more like me walking away from this discussion about the city I don't know too much about. Uh, yeah, I know it's the capital of um, Wisconsin, and there's a joke about cheese, apparently, I've learned from the comments. And I know, like, beer. I, I mean, there's two breweries, I swear that didn't <laughs> uh, get, get me on this one. But I know there's a lot of, like, microbreweries or something, and people are always talking about that. But otherwise, sorry, Milwaukee, still on my radio. I would love to go to Wisconsin. It's got a fun name, but uh, I, will, I have not yet been, and I will yet to be, for now. But the 30th biggest city, 
Baltimore, that's one I want to go to. The reason Baltimore's interesting to me is because um, while I was... Uh, I, I don't know what video point I was trying to bring up with this, but I was trying to talk about the uh, the highest like number of like murders per capita in a particular city. I thought I had the thing up still. I don't. But I was talking about the highest number of murders and how like everyone thinks it's Chicago, but that's because you ignore per capita. Baltimore has a depressing number of murders and crimes. And yeah, Baltimore. More like faulty less, am I right? But no, yeah, I want to go to Baltimore. I don't know much about it. Maybe I won't want to go after I've been, but that's the challenge you run. Uh, with certain cities. So yeah, Baltimore. Also, it's on the corridor between, like, Washington, D.C. and Boston, where it's like, this is the one corridor of America that's actually as densely populated as, like, a European or normal country. And that's interesting. But you know what else is interesting? The 29th biggest city, Louisville, Kentucky. There is a derby that happens here. The, or something. Also, I almost went, I've almost visited Louisville, uh, because their airport is, <laughs> I want to say there's, like, a weird thing where, like, the airport for Cincinnati or something like that is like an airport for Louisville, maybe. Uh, like it's halfway between them. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. But anyway, I was about to visit Louisville, Kentucky, and I was like, oh, that sounds fun. You know, because again, it's a very, uh, it's right on the border, which is interesting. It's a very blue city, and otherwise red state. Because Kentucky, you know, when you think of Kentucky, you think probably, at least pol politically, you think red state. But it's a very blue city. And I want to see how that like, plays up because also it's a it's a middle state middle city want to see what's going on there but it's not as famous as the 28th biggest city um so this one uh, i actually haven't heard of it it's called lace the gas lace the gas um i people must go here a lot i mean apparently it's paradise on earth no uh las vegas is obviously gambling cat capital of the US. Honestly, the clever thing about Vegas is that like, they just realized, hey, why don't we just make things that are illegal in other states legal in our states? I mean, obviously that's Nevada as a whole, but Las Vegas is a city kind of like set up to capitalize that. There's a weird history of the mob in Vegas and how that got set up. And uh, also everyone thinks Vegas and they think the strip, right? This is the strip right here. Also, all the casinos are temporarily closed. How sad. Sad, fortunately for us, Google Maps doesn't care about closures because it goes back in the past. Wow, look, they built their own Eiffel Tower. They legitimately did. They built, um, like, a mini New York. And, like, it's this crazy thing that is big and vibrant and it tr tries to get your business. Um, but, like, most locals in Las Vegas and even people who know Las Vegas or I guess maybe this is, like, just a cheaper option. Uh, the downtown Las Vegas is what most people in Vegas think of as Vegas. It's, like, a bit tackier. But uh, it's a very different place. This is what, like, there, it's a story of two Vegases, really. This is the Vegas that's actually in Las Vegas. Like, this is what you should technically be pitching. There's, like, a, oh, that's a jewelry shop. But there's, like, there's casinos here, but they're, like, much more downplayed, I'd say. Whereas uh, most people, what they picture is the Las Vegas, which isn't actually in Las Vegas. It's in Paradise, if I'm not mistaken. Let's prove that. Yep, Paradise actually encompasses most of the Las Vegas Strip. Including the as as soon as paradise ends, the strip seems to end and new things seem to start. It's a whole weird thing, and now you know. Uh, oh, which even means, by the way, there is a sign. I have been to it. See, I've been to Las Vegas. I lied to you all. I've been there twice. Once for a day. Once for like a week. Maybe less than a week. But I went there for a, a while. Also, you know, actually, you know, what, this is a 28 minute video. Can I just quickly complain? Why? But I know, I know, it's meant to be like pedestrian crossing. But it, every time I saw this sign for so long, I was like. Ped Xing? And it's like Zing Ped if you read it on the road, because Americans forgot to turn that one off. I'm very sorry. You know what? Let's pretend that you didn't see that. Um, I can't hide it anymore. It's just there. It won't go away. Anyway, so <laughs> professional second channel. In America, road signs say Ped Xing, and it's like, it sounds like something else, you know? It's meant to be pedestrian cross, you know, X for crossing. But it's like, I just hear like pedophile zinging somewhere. And it's like, what? what's happening and where? But there's the Las Vegas sign. Fabulous Las Vegas. But the sign, as you can confirm, if we go back at Paradise, that sign is in fact in Paradise. It's actually just after you've entered Paradise. So you enter Paradise and you're in Las Vegas. Whole fun point, I guess. But anyway, Las Vegas is not in Las Vegas. Now you know. But you know what you do know about? Oklahoma City. What's in Oklahoma City? Uh, a big terror attack. One of the biggest domestic uh, bombings for a while. And it's the capital of Oklahoma. The way you can tell it's the capital is because it's called Oklahoma City. No, it, it just it just is the capital. Which is rare. Most uh, American cities have their biggest state and their capitals be separate. 
Oklahoma City says, nah, we can combine those things together, and they do it here. There's a suburb of Oklahoma City called Bethany. That sounds like a fun place to live. Where do you live? I live in Bethany. I don't know, it just, it seems like an inappropriate comment, but apparently it's not. Also, the village. Should we just criticize American suburb names? Or should we talk about the 26th biggest city? It's going to be Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis is where Jack Daniels claims to be from. I feel like I've said this before and it's wrong. Um, but Memphis, Tennessee is definitely where they claim to be on adverts on the tube in London. They're like, this is freshly brewed in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, other things I know about Memphis include precisely nothing, sadly. Uh, I know it's at the very edge of Tennessee. I'd love to visit sometime. But things I'd also love to visit include Portland, uh, Oregon. I made a comment about, um, <laughs> I made a comment in my 50 States video about how Oregon was like probably a pretty gay state. And a lot of people took that very offensively. Like, oh yeah, I came here to see what Took had to say about Oregon. He just said it was gay. But I would like to, uh, you know, quickly take this one back and be like, actually, I looked into it. And did you know that first of all, Oregon is in fact the fourth gayest state, 4.9%. Third gayest, really, tied, uh, I would say. So they're the fourth gayest state, which is something quite impressive. But um, as well as that, if you look at Portland as a city, one, San Francisco is the highest LGP percentage at 15%, which is nuts, by the way. Um, but also, if you look, Portland, Oregon, 9% is LGB. Don't know where the T went. Apparently, it's not there anymore. But um, yeah, fun fact, Portland is a gay city. It's not unfair to say. I've got facts and statistics to back me up. Um, but yeah, other than that, I know Portland's a very, it's like, it's a one big city, like I know there are other cities, but it's the big city in Oregon, the only one on this list, in fact, that makes like what would otherwise be a really rural state into like a big, it's known as the super liberal state, even though it's got just a liberal city in it. In fact, actually, you know, I looked into this one too, because you know what I do? I look into fun facts, because that's how we live our life. And, um... I closed the fun fact about Portland. I'm very sad. But um, yeah, if you look at the state map, it's like most of it is rural red, etc. And it's just that they happen to have the big city of Portland. Why is Portland here? I'll never know. I do know, though, that there's two Portlands. There's one in Oregon and there's one in Maine. And they're both the biggest cities in their respective states, which is confusing because when you say Portland, you think of Portland, Oregon, but there's a Portland, Maine, too. But you know, there's also Portland is the 25th biggest state, city. We've gone through half but we got half to go. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville is, um, it's called the Music City. I don't understand how a city can be famous for music or like how that can be a sales pitch because they advertise themselves as like, go to Nashville, the Music City. And it's like, music doesn't make me want to go to cities. I don't, I, I've never been to a, a city and been like, where's the music at? I want to hear the freshest songs that come from it. Because you know, my music is not related to my geographic taste, but Nashville is also uh, the sta uh, state capital and largest city of Tennessee. Again, another state which actually combines the two, rare for American cities to do. Um, and Nashville, Tennessee is also quite interesting because uh, actually there's a direct flight to the UK, which means I know a lot about it. And the things I know about it is actually, I, I, I lied, I don't know anything about it. It's just a, it's it's a big city in Tennessee. It's a very interesting city in Tennessee. There's a lot, of, like, cause it's the South, but also not. And outside of America, Nashville hot is used as a description of a lot of hot things. Like it's hot, it's Nashville hyphen hot. Uh, like KFC does some wings like that. There's a burger at some other place I get that is the Nashville burger. It's delicious. And yeah, Nashville sounds like a Nashville. It's, it's got like a funny, like it's got a fun phoneticness to say, but also I picture spicy. So when I picture spicy, I picture my comments about Detroit because people are always offended when I'm like, Detroit, we know it for its rundownness. And Detroit is very rundown. It's one of those few cities that, because people like to be like, oh, property can only go up. Not when it's in Detroit, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> but like, no more, seriously, uh, Detroit is a city that is famous for motors and stuff like that. Like historically speaking, like they used to make, when when manufacturing was in the United States of America, this is the place they decided to do it, I believe for reasons I'm not too sure of. Um, and uh, yeah, Detroit is nowadays a city where a lot of very rich people live. Like I've heard a lot of rich people stories. So I guess it's a very um, income uh, disparate place. Cause again, it's very cheap to live there. If you want to live somewhere cheap and make a lot of money, Detroit might be the place to do so. Uh, obviously not like a lot of money in a job where you work for someone else, because there aren't many jobs. Not even at the Greek town casino. Man, I wonder like, you know what? The other states that have like a casino, why don't they just make more? Is the Greek town casino any good? It doesn't seem like it is. Should we, should we try and get ourselves booked? Oh, it's got a 4.9 star. 
let's go to the Greek Camel Casino. Let's let's bet big there. Everyone thinks that uh, you know Las Vegas is where you go, but this looks like Vegas to me, and it's a lot cheaper to stay nearby, I reckon. Anyway, we'll look into gambling in the U.S. another time. But what isn't gambling in the U.S. is my gamble on El Paso. It's a city in Texas. It's so close to both the border with. Is that Arizona? That's New Mexico, right? It's so close to the border of New Mexico, but also so close to the border with regular Mexico. So it's this interesting, like, tri-point almost area. So um, the area between El Paso and the city of Juarez, I think is how you say it, um, is really interesting because this combined area is the biggest metropolitan area that goes across two countries in all of the Western Hemisphere, which is a dumb way of saying it's, like, the biggest metropolitan area that goes across two countries in South and North America, the Americas. But still, it's really impressive that there's like this, even though Mexico and America, you pitch them having the hardest border, but despite that fact, they've got this combined kind of area. But if, yeah, like if you look, you can see the huge difference between like city planning across the border. You can see, I imagine, if we like go into a random place here, and then we can, so this is a random place in El Paso. Uh, by the way, El Paso is very bilingual. Can you work out why? I don't know if you can, but um, if, we, if we look around El Paso, you can be like, Actually, this looks really run down. We might have picked a bad neighborhood. Maybe El Paso is not a great uh, city in general. But if we compare this to a random place in uh, El in the Cua uh, Juarez, you can see how, like, oh, yeah, there is a difference. I could not comment on where that difference comes from. But people are like, oh, America's the worst country in the world. I mean, like, maybe Alto instead of stop. Fun fact. Anyway, let's get out there because even though the word stop, whatever. You know what? We're, we're going to move on from this. Should we look at Centro? You know, just in case I was being unfair to Juarez in Mexico. I bet their central area looks delightful. It does. Look how nice this is. Come for a visit. I sh I'm going to do the I'm going to start doing tourism for Mexico. Hey, go to Mexico. It sometimes looks pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of uh, comments that won't offend people, let's go on to the next city because 21st on the list is Boston, Massachusetts. So Boston, Massachusetts is definitely better than Boston, England, as I've gone over before. But Boston is the first place I went to the US, so it's got like a special place in my heart. Honestly, my genuine impression is Boston is a city that could be in, like it could be a European city that just happens to be in America. All of the other American cities I've been to, with maybe New York being kind of an exception because it's so London-like, the two cities are so linked. Um, but like uh, most of the cities I've been to are very distinctly American in some way or another. Boston felt like Irish. It felt like, again, similar, but also different, which is a dumb way of saying something. It's just two oxymoronic terms. But like, if I share around, it's like, oh yeah, it just feels like I've gone to Ireland or something. That was my first impression walking around the place. It has good public transport, not American. Um, but also, apparently it's like one of the places where America is defined because like something, something, hill, shooting soldiers, Tea Harbor, uh, dumping something, independence revolution. Uh, people are big on that stuff. But to me, it's just the city where I visited first and I love, I, I went around, I, I think I, uh, yeah, I walked like all the way around Boston at like 4 a.m., giant, extra large Slurpee in one hand and, uh, you know, some beef jerky in the other. And I was like, this is America. I think I went to like an IHOP or something because I was just like, I realized I was hungry as I hit, because I, again, I just walked around the city. I think I hit like MIT maybe. And I was like, you know, I am tired. No, I hit Harvard. I know there's a there's a IHOP near Harvard somewhere. I went, there we go. I went to this IHOP right here. If you want to retrace my steps, this is the IHOP I had my first American pancakes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I, I, I walked straight from like the very heart of Boston to there. How long does that take? It seems like a long time. Oh, also this bridge, the Longfellow Bridge. It's a very interesting bridge of like, I don't know why it was interesting though. I just know that it was. But yeah, Boston. I love I love the city. I could talk about it forever. People who aren't from Boston uh, have no idea what I was talking about. So instead I'll say um, Cambridge and Harvard are in different places. So MIT is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology because they're near Boston. But be once you cross the bridge, you're in a different city, which is weird, but that's how America works. Am I right? Speaking of the 20th biggest city, it is a city that is not inside a state because it is its own little state area. It's Washington, the District of Columbia. So Washington, D.C. is an interesting state, not only because of the... Oh, it's not actually a state. It maybe should be, but that's a debate for another time. Um, so Washington is a very interesting city because did you know the U.S. government is here, including the White House where the most powerful white man in the land lives. That's how. That's why they called it that, I'm pretty sure. Trust me, that's US history, I know it. 
I'm very, I'm very good with this. Um, so no, more seriously, the White House is the place where that man called the president lives. And also there's this big national mall, which I, I tried to go there to buy all my goods that I heard America's so good at, but instead there's just a bunch of free museums. So yeah, free museums in America is kind of an odd thing. Uh, there's a lot of like world-class museums like all next to each other. That's interesting. Also, it's just a very modern American city, which is odd because it's like so, um, let's just call it like heavily D, heavily whatever. Like it's a very international city. It's very liberal. It's very whatever else, but yeah, at times, even like the most liberal president you can imagine wouldn't fit in. So when you have like a super Republican Senate House and White House, it's like, huh, I wonder how that happens. But anyway, with that said, like it's it's a weird feeling that like the capital is so different to the rest of the country in that way. But maybe that's why they don't want it to be its own thing. Or maybe I'm just saying words, but you know what? That's how all videos are. But also let's go to the 19th uh, biggest city in the United States of America because Denver, Colorado, what is Denver, Colorado? It is a city I have been to. I went there literally because I like typed in the UK to somewhere on Skyscanner and it was like, Denver's the cheapest place you can fly. And I was like, oh, okay then. And it's like, oh, with a major airline too. And I was like, heck yeah, I'm flying to Denver. So uh, yeah, I really love Denver. One, workable public transport. That's a rare thing in the United States. But for people who don't care about public transport, it's got a huge airport that people make conspiracy theories about. Um, which is kind of fun. Uh, the city borders of Denver, which is the state capital of uh, Colorado, also the biggest city, rare thing, like I mentioned. Uh, they actually drew it so they could get Denver Airport in their borders because no one else wanted it in theirs for reasons. Um, then also the other thing about Denver is it's like the closest major city to like major skiing slopes. Like I took a bus and then another bus, again, only two buses to a ski resort. You can do that. Uh, I think it was near Nederland. I, re I recognize that being a thing, but one of these mountains, Maybe Eldora, maybe something else. The fact that you could like be within an hour and a half from a huge city, like mega city in the mountains skiing was amazing. There's even a train that takes you to uh, like Winter Park or something. That's really cool. The fact that it's really cold and really hot at the same time. Like when you're on top of the mountain, it's snowing, but also it's really hot outside and there's some magic about how that works. So you get sunburned even while you're cold. That's cool. Also, it's called the Mile High City. So if you want to join the Mile High Club, none of this nonsense about plain bathrooms, which is the grossest thing you can do, just go to Denver. There we go. Let's move on to 18, Seattle. So I, Seattle, I don't have a pun, I'm sorry. I, I'm gonna Seattle this dispute though, that it's the biggest city in uh, Washington, because fun fact, it is uh, actually that, Never mind. Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to Seattle for just making one last pun about the city because the Space Needle is the most famous thing. I mean, Google Maps tells you, but you don't need to tell hear that from me. Um, but the other thing about uh, Seattle that's so interesting is that a lot of tech companies are based here. Like Silicon Valley is what you usually imagine when you imagine tech, but Seattle has a lot of tech companies too. Microsoft is based somewhere in Redmond, which is to the south. I checked on a map at one point and now I've forgotten. Uh, Microsoft is based somewhere around here. Um, Kirkland is where Costco has the, oh, here's Kirkland, here's Redmond. Costco, Microsoft. Bellevue, I wanna say is Amazon, or at least built, uh, it's uh, Bezos or something like that. Uh, it's like a big city with a lot of things that are, are based around here. Uh, why is that the case? Would love to know sometime. I'm, I'm not telling you how it is, I'm telling you what I know. Um, and yes, yeah, Seattle is a major, uh, destination and also it's one of the very few places in America like it's interesting because all of Canada is basically next to America with very few exceptions like Edmonton but like all of the all of the Canadian provinces are like closer to uh, America really than they are to each other in terms of distance from major city to major city but Seattle is one of the few like American cities that's like oh yeah closer to Canada and Vancouver than it is to another another major American city so there is a fun fact about Seattle but the 17th biggest city is one that I know precisely one thing about. Indianapolis, again, I'd love to visit just because like Indiana's a state you only ever hear bad things about and I'm sure that's not true. But Indianapolis um, is famous for the Indianapolis 500. I imagine the Speedway. There we go, look at it, I found it on a map. Uh, so yeah, this is the Indianapolis 500 Speedway, which is where people race cars all day. Brum brum, probably a good race. Um, and other than that, I know that it's a pretty big city and I'd like to go. That's, again, that's all I've got. They've got a World War Memorial. I mean, wasn't much fighting going on in Indianapolis, but imagine they sent some people. 
Good job, Indianapolis, for sending some people to a war and then memorializing it. That's a good thing to do. But it's not as a good thing to do as to be Charlotte, North Carolina. So Charlotte, North Carolina is a big, like, corporate city. I know they've got a lot of companies have their headquarters here for reasons I don't fully know. Like, again, I've tried to look into it, actually, but I can't work out why that you, you'd pick Charlotte as a big headquarters. Like, why not one of the biggest cities or why not the most advantageous city? But people, places pick Charlotte. It's like a big regional city. As far as, like, the south goes, like, southeast, I guess I should say, big cities outside of Florida is, like, Charlotte and Atlanta really only. So Charlotte is, like, the second biggest city in the southeast. Uh, I guess it'd be the second biggest, because Atlanta was 37th, when you go by city limits. I imagine Atlanta's bigger if you go by metropolitan area. You know, can we confirm that right now? Let's do it. It's my video. So Atlanta would be 9th, whereas Charlotte is 23rd. Yeah, there we go. Save myself. I know facts. I just, just, you know, facts don't know themselves. That's the biggest problem. So no, yeah, Charlotte, is, even though it's the 16th biggest city, it's because it has a big city limit versus not as many people around it. That's why those things are so different. The Charlotte Douglas International Airport is a huge hub for American Airlines. So a surprising number of flights go in and out of Charlotte, which has always been weird to me. Like so many times to connect to a city in America, you have to go through Charlotte. It's like, why Charlotte? What's special about Charlotte? And the only things I know is that it's a huge, oh wait, major city and commercial hub in North Carolina. It's modern city center, uptown, is home to the Levine. Okay, there you go. It doesn't, doesn't tell me. Also, the NASCAR Hall of Fame is there. So now I want to go to Charlotte just to see that. That sounds fun. I want to see people go on a circuit. I'm sorry, Indianapolis. I'll betray you for the 16th biggest city, but I won't betray you for the 15th biggest. So I will say, just fun fact, while I was like, I was trying to find a list of biggest cities to like confirm it, because I knew there's going to be, there's going to be one person whenever you use Wikipedia who's like, hey, did you know the Wikipedia list isn't actually accurate because anyone can edit it? And ho, 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 I'm so smart. So um, I figured someone would do that. So I figured I'd go on the census.gov website. And although I didn't find uh, a current list, I found this list on, this is census.gov, the official government website. Why is it in ASCII? Ask the US government, not me. But um, this is from uh, 160 years ago now, it would be, I guess. That sounds like maps to me. And uh, interesting enough, if you look at the cities, one, they're all far smaller. I mean, New York's still number one. But like besides that, they're all much smaller. Um, but then the interesting thing is San Francisco is the only city on this list that has stayed perfectly in the same position, uh, you know, like 50, uh, 160 years ago to now. It was the 15th biggest city then. Back then it had 56,000 people. Nowadays, to be that same size, you have to have 883,000 people. Although it's catching up on Columbus and Fort Worth. One day, San Francisco will reclaim that title. But no, uh, so interesting enough, San Francisco is like a big city. Like, one of the biggest cities that isn't a big city. Which sounds dumb to say, but basically San Francisco is both a city and a county. So it's, um, it's really constrained in terms of how many people actually live there versus how many people live there. Because the BART doesn't just, it, even though the BART covers San Francisco, it mostly connects people from outside of San Francisco into it. So, yeah, San Francisco has a huge number of jobs in the area that people commute into, which is... Maybe an odd thing. Um, San Francisco is obviously one of the most famous. Interesting enough, like I'd say, like in terms of size to fame, San Francisco does the best. Like it's everyone knows the Golden Gate Bridge, which uh, like how many other monuments are just like so? How many cities have a thing about them? Like maybe New York and the Statue of Liberty, but the Golden Gate Bridge, this thing right here, is very well known about, which is quite interesting, right? Um, and also the other, but I say like even though it's very famous for like good things internationally, Alcatraz and Golden Gate Bridge, again two. Very, very well-known things. I'd say inside the US, I only ever hear, like, super skeptical things. Because even if you are, like, a Democrat elsewhere around the country, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a city that's vaguely blue. That's all you have to say, like, I hear it's cramped, I hear it's expensive. No one likes expensive, no one likes cramped. But if you're a right-leaning, a conservative or a Republican or whatever you want to call yourself in America, uh, people hate the way San Francisco is set up. It is the most democratic city in the United States of America. Also, the Speaker of the House, whatever her name, uh, whatever the title is, Nancy Pelosi is representing this district. It's literally something like 83% Democrats, like 17, like the split is the highest in the country for a major city. It is a very, 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 very liberal city. So it should be like, in theory, the example of like, again, like in, in my head, the best way to do this would be like, find the most Republican city, find the most democratic city, compare them, see which one can do like objectively better. But yeah, this is a, a weird case that like, despite the fact that it is so heavily blue, it manages to get a lot of businesses into it, which is something, again, like that is what good uh, left-wing policy should be, right? Like, oh yeah, you know, we want your money here. We, we want you to give us some of it, 
but not to leave us. And it seems as though, like, Uber, Twitter, uh, so many... When you're walking around San Francisco, you just find, like, oh, yeah, major tech company, major tech company, major tech company. Um, and I've been to San Francisco, like, three times now. And you've even seen videos from one of my times. You're about to see a video of me flying home uh, from there because I got a whole fun thing going on. But yeah, San Francisco, very famous. Also, apparently Full House was set here. I've got a picture of me in front of the painted ladies and these are apparently significant. I, <laughs> I, I, to me, they're not, but maybe you love it. Uh, and yeah, San Francisco is the most European like city on the West Coast. Like the West Coast is so distinctly different to the East Coast, but also to Europe. San Francisco feels like uh, just a European city, which is weird given how different it is in every other way. But it's, I guess it's like because they're so densely packed in, um, they just, they, they're built different. But if we go to a random, this isn't a random street, this is, oh, we're inside someone's apartment. This is nice. But if we look out from this guy's apartment, you can see how like, it's got this European styling to the houses besides the colors. And it's very interesting and different to the rest of the US, but also to many other places. So next up, let's talk about the 14th biggest city. I'm sorry, Columbus, Ohio. I want to tell you more about yourself, but I do know that you're the biggest city and the capital, which is cool. Wikipedia tells me that. Uh, besides this, I'm just going to say Columbus is a city I hear about a lot. I have a friend from, ooh, back to San Francisco. I, I have a friend from uh, Columbus, Ohio, and he tells me it's okay. <laughs> so that's, that's what I got for Columbus. It's the biggest city on the list that I can really tell you like, oh yeah, big Ohio city. Full stop. Um, so we got 13th, which is going to be Fort Worth um, in Texas. So yeah, Dallas and Fort Worth are like two big cities. Um, there's lots of famous things about both of them. I say Dallas is the bigger, more famous city by itself, but Fort Worth is um, obviously this huge thing uh, that is again, it's but it's it's interesting because it's got low house prices for a major uh, city and it has good public transport, which is rare to that both those you know like once you get the good public transport you'd lose the good house prices not in dallas fort worth also there is some huge there is actually like a giant connection between them and yep there we go dallas both linked to the airport and linked to dallas now you know fun facts with toy cat so um yeah it's light rail too which i find fascinating but what also i find fascinating is the 12th biggest city jacksonville florida so it's interesting because um, even though it's the biggest city in Florida, supposedly, um, and even though I hear about it, I've heard about it a bunch because like, uh, I think Jason Mendoza from The Good Places from Jacksonville, you hear a lot about it, but um, I, as far as like the actual city itself, it's like, I know it's very big. I know that I imagine based on, I've only ever heard negative things about it, that the reputation for like trashy Florida comes from here. But I think that it's probably not all trashy. I think it's got that problem. It's got that reputation problem cities have where like some part of the city is probably very, very trash and the rest is just normal America. But because of the whole Florida reporting law where all police interactions have to be reported, everyone's like, man, Florida man, she'll be wacky today. Also, let's go on. Let's look at a McDonald's because, you know, people are going to ask for it. Here is a McDonald's in Jacksonville, Florida. That man has a nice car and Florida. See, the look of the look of this place compared to New Mexico, compared to like Boston, the diversity you have in the United States of America is so shocking, but we've got to get through some more on this list. I want to, I want to be less than an hour, or people will complain that it's too long. People will complain it's too long if it's 20 minutes, but you know what? <laughs> Let's talk about Austin, Texas. So Austin, Texas is really interesting because, again, it's a very um, very liberal city in a very not liberal state, although all the cities in Texas are kind of that. But this place is, like, famously... Um, liberal, but also it's the state capital of Texas. So the capital of Texas is a, is a city that's very different to the rest in that way. Um, what do I think about Austin, Texas? I've heard it has amazing food. Literally, that's also on, like, I don't know where I heard that from, but like, there's direct flights to the UK, they've got good Mexican food. What more do I need to know before visiting? Uh, apparently not very much. So one day, I'll fly into Austin and I'll see the Museum of the Weird. See? Uh, but yeah, it's meant to be a very weird, interesting city. And for a mid-sized city, although apparently 11th biggest in the country. Wouldn't have guessed that. I guess it's got a big area. It has a big area. See? Nailed that. I'm smart, I think, besides not knowing that. So next up on the list, we have going, we're going back to California for San Jose. So San Jose is the 10th biggest city in the United States of America. And the interesting thing about San Jose is the fact that... Um, it's like this huge city. Uh, even though si Silicon Valley is probably more associated with San Francisco, uh, the truth is like the San Jose-San Francisco corridor has uh, much more 
Like it's most most of the companies are headquartered somewhere between there and there. For instance, here's Googleplex. For instance, here's Intel's museum, which is temporary closed. For instance, Apple Park is apparently here. Is this Apple Park? I'm not sure where Apple Park is, but I know it's this ridiculous building. Um, all of these like huge California like companies are mostly based closer to San Jose than they are to um, uh, San Francisco, which is interesting because I guess like San Jose just has more room to expand. Also, yeah, I know it's San Jose. I just wanted to annoy some people in the comments. And you better believe, done precisely that. But let's move on to the ninth biggest city. It's Dallas in, in Texas. I know about Dallas because one of the RuneScape servers was set to there. Like that was the one for like South America, South North America. Fun fact, that's all I can tell you. We've gone through this area three times. It's a big metropolitan area, has its own airport. One of the, if you're connecting through the South and American Airlines, you'll go through there. And Dallas is really nice and I wanna visit it sometime. But what I'm visiting first is San Diego, California. It has a zoo. I don't know how I know about the zoo so famously. If I hear San Diego, I'm like, San Diego Zoo. Why is that the case? I don't know. I just also know that it's like the the biggest close city to the um, Mexican border in California. So yeah, San Diego, Tijuana. That's why you hear about hookers and coke in Ca uh, Tijuana, because people go from San Diego, where they earn the big bucks, and they go straight to Tijuana. I'm gonna mispronounce everything. So next up, we've got San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio has a huge Hispanic slash Latino population. The two terms are very similar, but they overlap differently. Uh, like one of the highest in the country. Um, and that's really fascinating, in my opinion. Um, also, as you can see, uh, it makes like part of a triangle where like all of the big cities in Texas, because Texas is shaped like this, right? The shape of Texas is very well known. But as far as like where people live in Texas, because the, the least populated county in the United States is, it's up here somewhere, I looked into it recently. 186 people live in one county. It's fascinating to me. But like when you go to like Midland, Odessa, like these are very small places. But if you look at where most people live in um, Texas, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin, they're all in a big triangle. And bear in mind, they're all big cities because Houston's coming up from fourth, but before then, sixth is Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, born and raised in the playgrounds where I spent most of my days. Um, everyone in Philadelphia is mad about cheesesteaks, right? Uh, like, I gotta get a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know what this voice is, but I'm sticking to it. Um, so in Philadelphia is meant to be like absolute garbage. Everyone's scared of it. Oh, it knows where I've been. I've been to Jim Steaks. I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll, I'll know when I see it. I have been to Jim Steaks. I remember this place quite fondly, actually. Um, so I've been, I've gotten myself a cheesesteak. Every single, every single person from, just the area around Philadelphia, or Pens like they're like, you need to get a cheesesteak. And I get me a cheesesteak and it's like, this is meat between bread with some cheese on. I like that, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan, but like, it's not like world-defining food. Uh, so sorry, I just insulted all of Philadelphia. But besides that, I do like Philadelphia. Big gay ice cream. <laughs> what a fun name for a place. Um, but yeah, so this is a huge city. It's very diverse and sprawling. And I know for a fact that there's um, there's a tax on like buying drinks there. So everyone who shops in Philadelphia, uh, like most people have to go outside of Philadelphia to avoid it or something along those lines. It's kind of hot. I want to go back to Philadelphia for the Please Touch Museum. Oh, also there's, um, there's a lot of like famous American monuments to like your country existing or something. You know, British people, we prefer not to discuss that. But also the steps from Rocky, not around here. Oh, this is also cute and old. But um, somewhere around here, there's like Independence Hall. No, not there. But the steps from Rocky are somewhere. And I thought that was really cool, personally. What I also think is cool is the fourth, fifth biggest city in America. It's Phoenix, Arizona. So I like, you know how I like airports with wacky names like the Sunport? Phoenix calls their airport, because think about it. What should airports be called? I mean, really, they're kind of like, you know, it, they should be called like train stations or train stations, plane stations. Well, Phoenix takes a different approach because instead of airport, it's a sky harbor. It's a harbor for the sky. Although really it's not in the sky. I think it's a dumb name, but that's the international airport. So Phoenix Sky Harbor is a huge airport in the Southwest. Southwest? Yeah, that's the correct one. Um, and Phoenix is a huge city goes without saying, uh, but it's the it's the hugest city that has like regular temperature, problem, temperature problems. Like it is required to have air conditioning if you're a business in Phoenix because you will die without it. It hits like 40, 50 degrees Celsius, real degree units, um, which is insane in my opinion. But you know what else is insane in my opinion? Houston, Texas, because you know what? Houston, we have a problem, a problem that I can't explain what's going on with the city. So yeah, Houston is a huge city. I visited once for a couple of days. Whole fun story about that sometime, I should tell you. Um, 
<laughs> would love what as soon as the uh, confidentiality agreement on that one expires I'll get straight to what happens down in uh, Houston but yeah Houston's a very very interesting city uh, because again you picture he it, everyone actually was friendly to me even in Houston and I was like oh that is real nice it's very Texas you know like, like Houston has a downtown that's like a downtown in any other city like oh yeah big skyscrapers real big skyscrapers by the way uh, like you expect but I, w I went on a walk because like uh, just in the morning you know this is how I explore cities now you know more about me as a person I went on a walk one morning and I went past like the Harris County Court which is how I learned that it's in Harris County apparently I went past here so while I was walking past this area allow me to tell this story in vivid detail yeah, I was walking down this street right here and uh, there was a dude on the side of the road um, in case it's relevant he was an African-American gentleman but um, this this gentleman uh, on the road just like there on the street was just like he started singing at me and it's like I was like because as soon as you see homeless people any city like the sales pitch begins like hey here's why you should give me some money because guess what here's my story but instead he was just like singing at me like yeah do, 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 do. and I was like yeah I am, we are we are going now we are going I enjoyed that a lot also there's a big baseball stadium Minute Maid Park I my hotel was near that I want to say and uh, yeah Houston Texas very fun city. Also, Texas, uh, there, this city has public transport. Public transport that sucked in my experience, but maybe that's just me. Um, just want to throw that one out there. That they have light rail, which is wacky. This is such a low down street view. Huh. Jesus saves. You're, for God so loved that the world... For God so loved the world that he gave his only... But you know what? Apparently, this is how street view works in Texas. But anyway, with that said, uh, also, I save this for myself forever. Um, but when Rusk meets one of these streets, wait, we can find it. Uh, but I, when Rusk, on one of these street corners on Rusk, I forget which one now, I save this in my notes as like, a, at some point, I think it's Rusk meets Travis, I saw a Google Street View car go past and I was like, I'm going to be there one day. I'm going to be there one day. Am I there? June 2019. Damn it, I'm not there yet. <laughs> but yeah, I visited in August 2019. And I, there's going to be me and Google Maps with sunglasses going like this to the street view. I'm looking forward to it immensely. So Houston, Texas, the place where Toy Cat is on the street view. Speaking of places where Toy Cat's on street view, sadly, not in Chicago. So I've, um, Chicago is a city that's famous for murder. Um, uh, but I, I, I like it because, like, there's a lot of games based there. I want to say Watch Dogs. Yeah, Watch Dogs is based in Chicago. Super interesting. I love the, uh, the L. It's like an elevated metro. Although they have down underground metros too. But like, um, so this place called uh, The Loop if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's not shown on the map. But this area right here is called the Loop. It's kind of like the downtown area. But instead of having like uh, metros below the ground, no, 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 they have elevated tracks, which is why the, air, the, the Chicago Metro is called the L, even though a lot of it is below ground. But you know, we ignore that for the case of this. Uh, there's a big old bean. I went to the bean because I, uh, actually I can just tell the story. I had, a, I had a very close associate of the female nature based in uh, Chicago. And, um, where is the bean? Here's the bean, right? This has got to be the bean. So, uh, yeah, I, like, we went there, and then there's a giant bean. Why is there a giant silver bean? And why is it a tourist attraction? And she's like, you got to see the bean, which is from, like, Illinois or something. And so we saw the bean together. I mean, that's 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 the bean for you. Uh, but no, yeah, uh, I'd say Chicago is one of the more, more interesting cities in um, North America that I've been to. It's very cold, very... Like, it's very, like... On, with, with, with the three biggest cities, you've got New York on the East Coast, very East Coasty. LA is such a West Coast city. Chicago is really the city for the middle. And that seems like a dumb, obvious comment. But it really feels like it too. Like, uh, I liked it a lot. They have Chicago-style pizza too, which I thought was pretty good. I want to try some good Chicago-style pizza sometime. Give me a recommendation, Chicagoans, and I'll go back and I'll eat all that pizza. Because uh, I, I, I would be willing to fly to Chicago just for pizza. Probably should, like, double it down with that Mexican food and... Austin, Texas, where should I? But speaking of Mexican food and Austin testics, let's talk about... <laughs> my, my ability to say words is running out. Because I've been speaking for now, but Los Angeles, California, is... The, I should have done this as a live stream. That's a smart idea for the future. Um, so Los Angeles, California. This is a big city in California. The biggest city in all of California. Um, it's mostly famous internationally because of Hollywood being located within its ranks. Is, that actually, is Hollywood a part of... It is, yeah, there we go. Hollywood is. West Hollywood isn't, interestingly enough. Um, so the Hollywood Walk of Fame is famous. The Hollywood sign is famous. Universal Studios is here. It, it's a famous play. LAX, you know, I got off the plane at LAX with something, something to see. 
you know, Los Angeles, and it's bigger than even this number would say, you know. The list would suggest, you know, this this wrong list would suggest there's just 3.9 million people living there, uh, which is true, but so many people live in, like, here and there and there, and you know, Be Beverly Hills, you know about it. Santa Monica, probably heard about it. Uh, the fact that all of these places on their own, just little neighborhoods of a big city. Pasadena, I've heard of it. Anaheim, I've heard of it. Long Beach, technically a bit different city, but whatever. All of these different places, Hawthorne, heard of it. I think Elon Musk lives there. Um, all of these individual neighborhoods, or like most of them, uh, are quite, somewhat famous. I know that West Hollywood's very gay, for instance. Like, why do I know about all the gay cities in North America? I should question that sometime. But um, <laughs> definitely, like the fact that all of these different places are so famous, that is really interesting, in my opinion. But not as interesting as the biggest city in North America. So it's called Neuer Yoyu. New York, sorry. Um, I haven't actually heard of this one. So um, apparently it's uh, like the regular York in the UK, but it's new. Uh, yeah, like let me talk about regular York. So I know much more about that. Regular York, um, it's a couple of hours north of London on the train. I recommend visiting it because it's a really old city uh, in the UK. And um, yeah, it's got these like old walls around it. When you see New York, uh, when you see old York, the better York, it's like super fun, vibrant. Look how nice this picture is. This is taken so nicely. You, it's actually from a revolution in York. But anyway, York is a very nice city. I recommend you visit. Thank you for list, seeing my list of the 50 biggest. <laughs> we have to talk about it, don't we? I That would be way funnier, but just to avoid some of the comments, I do know New York. I also know um, common misconception. One, because New York was actually called New Amsterdam at first. People think because it was named New York that it was named after York. It actually was, but indirectly. It was named after the same dude for who York is named after. Like, there was a guy called something of York. No, who, who, and that guy was named after York. So it's like an indirect chain of secession there. Um, but then also, let's talk about New York. It's five boroughs, which is very weird. It's the only situation like that where the boroughs are kind of like counties, but also not. Um, there's New York, which is Manhattan. Most people think Manhattan when they see New York. It's the, again, it's like the densest American city. The only American city where most people don't own cars. Um, it's iconic when you look around this place, right? Um, but also the thing about New York is like every place has its skyscrapers, like Houston I showed you. The thing that like made me go crazy about New York is the fact that like the skyscraper district just doesn't really end. Like if we go right here and we look around a street, just, here we go. Okay, these aren't skyscrapers. You know, I was wrong to say it, but there's like a skyscraper district that just goes on endlessly. It's just skyscraper, 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 skyscraper. Um, and yeah, because New York is such a constrained city, like it's got water, 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 and then like not, it's got Central Park on that end. So like basically the city is constrained in all angles. It has to go up instead of outwards. And so it does go up instead of outwards. Central Park is hugely famous. Brooklyn is famous. Queens is slightly less famous. The Bronx is even less famous than that. Staten Island is a place that some people have in fact heard of. Um, there was a weird contest between New Jersey and New York for it. I drove through Staten Island once or other. Someone drove me very kindly through Staten Island. Uh, and it takes so long. It's a very long drive. Fun fact, bet you didn't know that, but now you do. It's a long drive, and also it smells on the other end. And the reason, uh, there's like a joke behind that, like New Jersey, but apparently it's something similar, gas or something like that. Anyway, so New York is a very, very, very big city. Uh, it's got three airports within it, although really actually New York isn't, New York isn't in New York. Uh, and it's such a big city that it basically extends into other states. Uh, again, when you measure the New York area, you're measuring across states. Like I, it's New York, Newark, Jersey City, Oh, actually, it's only two states here. Oh, wait, CT and PA. Yeah, Pennsylvania and also Connecticut, I guess that'd be. It's a huge, huge, huge metropolitan area. And um, yeah, New York is the biggest city in America by such a huge uh, gap. But here is a fun fact about it. Did you know, even though it's the largest city in the United States, and it's, the lar it's, it's considered the world capital by some measures, it's not only not the capital of the United States, it's also not even the capital of its own state. So yeah, even though I mentioned in a previous video, the New York should really be the capital. If, if there's going to be a capital of the world, I guess New York is a logical choice. Not even capital of its own state. Get wrecked, New York. But no, New York is a city I love. Um, if I had to live in another major city in the world, probably wouldn't be New York. But like, <laughs> New York is like, it's like, it's America's London. And so I have a big heart for it that way. But um, in terms of like actually going there, the metro is worse than the underground. I'm sorry. You know, am I just am I just gonna wreck on the biggest proportion of people? I think I think New York is definitely a bigger city in terms of population. I think it's bigger in terms of like if you're going somewhere, go to the Big Apple. But as far as like living there, 
I think London might have it beat. There we go. <laughs> slapped you of the regular York thing, slapped you of that. But no, I um, I like New York a lot. I will be revisiting, uh, and I have been multiple times. Only once the city itself, though. Every other time, I kind of like avoid it because it's so expensive. It's so expensive. It hurts. It stings. Uh, but you know what else stings? This sponsor slot at the end of the video where I say, hey, if you enjoyed this, check out the Reddit. I should have streamed this and I realized halfway through the video. And if you want to see future videos and streams and maybe um, talk about them too, reddit.com slash r slash toycat. I would promote actual things I make money from, like the Amazon affiliate links. But hey, you know, you watch an hour of me. The least I can do is thank you and say, hey, there's more of me available on this channel. All you have to do is subscribe and you'll see it. This should get less short. And also, do you want to see, I'm considering doing like the same for Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Let me know, friends. But for now, goodbye.